Right, episode two of Paul's M4 build. We're in the engine building room. We've got lots of bits of S55 laid out in front of us. Lots of the old bits as well, sort of hidden away, but we're just gonna run through all the bits we've got to go in it. It's quite a simple recipe really. With these, unlike normally aspirated builds that we do a lot where you're working on the minute differences that make a big difference. Um, the big thing with this really is getting air in and out. And where you've got a turbo, it's a lot easier um, and basically managing that cylinder pressure. So if we go from right to left, first of all, we have a very nice little array of Supertech valves. So we've got stainless inlet valves, Inconel exhaust valves, uprated valve springs, um, all the necessary collets and retainers over there. All very nice. So that'll essentially allow it to manage high boost pressures and revs um, and temperature as well. So Inconel is very good at drawing the temperature out of the, uh, the valve and transmitting that to the guide, which is going to be necessary in this. Um, the cylinder head's also being ported and having new exhaust valve guides because they're really quite worn for a 23,000 mile engine. So that's all being dealt with out in the machine shop. The head's not in here at the moment. Moving along, uh, we've got Marla Motorsport Pistons. Um, these are our favourite really for pretty much any build. Marla are our DOE supplier, so they know what they're doing with the engine as standard, and then they know what improvements to make over a standard part. These have got a hard anodized upper ring groove, um, graffle coating, coated skirts, and they're forged. Everyone hangs themselves up on that word forged, but they're a far stronger piston than standard um, and have all the features to allow it to handle all the heat, all the cylinder pressure, and everything else going on with it. Also got some very nice gudgeon pins with those, um, heavier duty than standard. Uh, so all very nice. Next up, best in the business, Arrow. Um, got a set of Arrow rods here. Again, a forged rod, um, really nice construction, as always, with Arrow. ARP fasteners, all made in the UK. You really can't go wrong. Our favorite for everything. So they'll be able to handle the cylinder pressure again. And finally, ARP head studs, um, just to keep the head from lifting with all the cylinder pressure, you know, a thousand horsepower is going to, um, essentially it's going to want to blow the head off the block. So anything we can do to keep the head gasket clamped down is helpful. So that's what they're for. Final little nugget, uh, not really so much to do with the engine itself, but um, part of the engine building process with an S55 is the high pressure fuel pump assembly. So this is a Dortch unit. In essence, uh, the high pressure fuel pumps are cam driven. Um, and what Dortch have managed to do is, is I believe, make a, a lumpier cam in there. So essentially it drives the high pressure fuel pumps at a high rate, which will feed M5 injectors. Keep plenty of petrol going in there. We've also got methanol injection, various other bits going on with the car. But for the engine itself, it's a relatively simple build. So me and Matt are gonna crack on to even get this bottom end together and ready for that ported head. And then uh, after that, it'll be all going back together in the car.
we're here in the machine shop with Paul's S55 head. Uh, this isn't the first process that's actually been done to it. Once we'd uh, taken apart the, the head, we, uh, we found quite a significant amount of wear in the valve guys, despite the engine actually only having 23,000 miles on the clock. Um, so your guide is basically, it's a phosphor bronze. It's got the valve running up the middle of it, and that wants to be nice and parallel. We measure them and we've got sort of 70 to 80 microns taper on that valve guide, which is, which is actually no good at all. So it's a case of heating the head up and pushing the guides out and then putting new guides in. Not so much a, a replacement item, it's a pretty specialist process. It's not something you can do in, on the bench at home. So with the new guides in, they're then home to, home to finish size and then the head's given a good clean and it's, it's put onto our valve seat cutter. Now here we're actually doing a few things. On those exhaust guides, we're making sure that the, where the guide's gone in, it's now completely concentric to the valve seat. And then we're also modifying the geometry of that seat profile a little bit as well. Where it's been ported, we want the air to sort of flow in to the seat as much as possible, varying on, on the intake and the exhaust. We've also got a couple of different variances here where BMW obviously mass produce these engines. There is a little bit of a variance in the seat depths. So by measuring everything up, we're we're sort of reprofiling the head and blueprinting it as it were and getting it back to the geometry that we want. So what we're doing here is we've, we've actually cut all the exhaust seats and now we're going to cut one of the inlet seats as well. Top angle just cutting, just coming onto the seat. And you'll notice there's some uh, some red fluid actually on that valve seat, and what that is is sort of the marking out fluid. So by putting that on the seat profile, we can actually see the geometry of the seat being cut because it's not always because we're changing the top angle slightly it's going to cut the top angle first then it's going to come out onto that 45 degree seat angle between and then it will just start nibbling away at the, at the throat where where it's been ported and the, the throat has been enlarged a bit where our bottom angle is is only just sort of kissing on the cutter so it's all flowing nicely into each other with our, our seats all cut the next process is sort of rotate the head put all the valves in and carry out a few more checks. From there, we, we sort of know where we are with the head. It's then a case of getting the head on the bench and carrying out a load more measurements. We've got slight variances in the spring retainers, in the spring seats, which on these are built into the valve stem seal. So by measuring all those different bits up, we can then start pairing the springs and getting all those variances to add up so we can get our seat pressures on the bottom of the, um, the bottom of the springs near on identical, which is what we want for smooth running. It um, especially helps sort of up higher in higher in the rev range when all your springs are acting at the same sort of rate. So we'll, uh, we'll see you on the bench once we're off this machine and starting to assemble. Uh, the, the term blueprinting obviously gets thrown around a bit and uh, it's not just a case of carrying out the machine work and then slapping it all together. Sort of, we've got a spreadsheet in front of us, so you're not gonna see all the numbers, but this is our inlet and exhaust. We've got various different dimensions from stem protrusion to um, retainer to stem tip dimensions, spring seat thicknesses, install heights, recommended install heights. So by doing all these numbers, we can ensure that we get a head that's as, as good as it can be. This is far more in depth than, than many would go to on a build, but when, when we're sort of pushing to the power figures we want from pools, everything's got to be absolutely spot on. So we're um, a load more numbers to run, a few more machine processes, and then we'll, uh, we'll be back in the clean room for assembly.
just like that, the engine's ready. <laughs> it's really difficult to really explain how much work goes into these. Um, unfortunately, the world of the internet makes engine building look like a simple case of pop all the bits together and you're done. In fact, um, you know, the original engine was stripped, as you've just seen, um, or seen in the previous episode, and the crank went away, it was balanced, um, it's then, everything's been measured, um, we've gone through the gradings of each bearing, chosen our own clearances, and essentially then worked through everything to get the oil clearances around the crank that we want, um, which I will say now aren't BMW specs. Um, and then the, the build begins really. Um, so as well as just looking at bearing gradings, you've got um, essentially dry building. So we put everything together in the con rods and in the block without a crank in there. We measure it, um, then we measure the crank and then we can use two measurements to basically work out the difference. Then we actually know what clearance we've got. Um, a lot of places we use plastic gauge, which is essentially a strip of plastic that you put in the engine, you put the crank in with the bearings, bolt it all down, unbolt it, pull it apart, and how much that plastic is squashed gives you an idea of how much clearance you've got, which it works. Um, it's a good sort of basic way of doing it, but it doesn't give you an idea of the shape of that bearing tunnel that you've got. Um, and you know, it really only gives you one measurement, whereas we measure in three different planes and we'll essentially be checking for the, the real sort of geometry of that um, clearance rather than just one single measurement that's a rough idea of how squashed the plastic is compared to a sheet. Um, that's all well and good for a hobby kind of engine rebuild, but that is not what we do here. Um, so after that, you've then got bore measurements, things like that for the pistons, piston ring gapping, um, once that's all complete, you can finally put it together. So that's all done. Um, as a little reminder, we've got Arrow Precision Rods and Marlow Motorsport Pistons, um, then a balance crank. We've gone for all genuine BMW bearings, um, partially due to hitting the clearance specs we want, also partially due to um, availability at the moment. Unfortunately, getting anything aftermarket is an absolute nightmare. Um, so. A well spec, you know, good clearance on a BMW bearing is going to serve this engine extremely well. Um, got VTT crank hub, so that's spline lock um, to stop any timing slip issues. Um, and then the real party piece of this engine, um, I mean, the whole lot of it is rather nice, but the real party piece is the head. So that's been fully ported um, to proper specifications and measurements. Uh, plenty of people will be happy to go at something with a Dremel and call something ported, um, which it is, but whether that's actually doing your engine any good or not without measuring and knowing what you're aiming for as well is just a bit of a pointless task. So everything's ported to a specification um, and measured, and that is to ensure that it actually flows well rather than just being a big hole in the side of the cylinder head that doesn't necessarily have any aerodynamic advantage. Um, so all ported, uh, all the machine work's been done. We actually found the valve guides really bad on this. Um, so it's had new exhaust valve guides. Uh, the inlets are fine. Um, new uh, exhaust valve guides all fitted uh, in the machine shop, which is just over my shoulder. Um, and then whenever you do replace valve guides, you should recut the seat to it, which we were doing on this anyway to optimize the seats to the port work. So that's all been done. Um, and it's got full SuperTech valve train. So um, valve springs, the lot, and everything is measured and blueprinted. So within reason, anyone can put a cylinder head together um, with a set of springs, but actually measuring the spring rates, installed heights, um, and you know, coil bind, everything like that. If you're not measuring that, then you don't know what you're dealing with, a bit like if you put a bottom end together without measuring anything. So everything's been measured, everything's been set. So we've got, um, you know, within a really good tolerance, we've got exactly the same spring rates across the whole cylinder head. Um, meaning that each cylinder can perform absolutely perfectly um, and with balance, so you know, haven't got essentially a shock going through the valve train where you've got one valve performing a lot differently to another one um, in terms of springs. Um, and with the valve seat cutting I mentioned, everything's cut perfectly for the SuperTech valves. Um, all the valve train above that is standard. Um, Paul didn't want to go down the route of cams in this um, just because he wants to keep it daily drivable and essentially driving the way it does now but obviously with a lot more power and 
no doubt a little bit more turbo lag, but hopefully kept to a minimum. So speaking of turbos, I've got a pair of Kratos turbos down here, um, made in the States, and they are proven up to over a thousand wheel horsepower, so they will provide plenty of airflow for what we're doing. Um, Paul will largely be sticking to pump fuel, so we'll see what we get with it. Um, certainly quite interested to see. Uh, we've topped that off with some Funk My Sport turbo blankets, which are available on our website. Um, that's really just for heat management in the engine bay. Uh, you may well have seen videos of these where one of the guys from Funk is holding it with a blowtorch the other side. You know, they really do stop heat escaping. Um, and where you've got various inlet components that are packed in so close around, um, this is going to be a really important thing, heat management. You know, if it's on full boost for any amount of time, it's going to kick out a lot of heat. Um, and it's a pretty cramped engine bay with these. So that's critical. Um, the final steps really uh, on the fueling side of things. So we've got a Dorch lift kit um, over this side. I will overlay my talking nonsense with um, some footage, um, which essentially means the standard fuel pumps can pump a hell of a lot more fuel into the direct injectors. Um, those direct injectors are M5 injectors. Um, so I've got a far higher capacity than um, an F80 or F82. Um, so I'll get more fuel in that way. And then we've also got port methanol injection. Um, so rather than nozzles, which is what everyone does, which um, leak and they're generally pretty poor quality and are most of the things that I hate in this world. Um, we've got actual injectors along the, uh, along the port. Um, so we can more accurately um, and with better precision um, pump in methanol straight into the inlet ports um, which will all be fed through a JB4 um, port methanol or port injection controller um, you know that's the same part regardless of fuel um, and that's kind of it really it's quite a simple recipe um, it's same with anything it's an air pump if we can get more air in and out of it and match that with the right amount of fuel that's going to make some big power um really looking forward to getting this in the car which is the next step and uh yeah i think next time you see this it will probably be on a bench with a gearbox attached to it get ready to put it in the car so we will see you next time